Okay, so for me, I know one of the things was, um, what was it that made me question? I can very, the moment my trust is kind of played on, mm -hmm. I can ghost very quickly. Yes. And I know that's not unusual. Like a lot of people are like, yeah, it's okay, you ghosted because somebody hurt you. Yeah. But I think there's a healthier way. Maybe they didn't mean to, maybe they didn't know. Mm -hmm. And so it's about choosing to say, there's a time and place to address issues in a certain way. So sometimes ghosting, I just feel like ghosting is a whole other conversation. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's okay because maybe they're just toxic. Yeah. But sometimes they're reaching out and saying, what happened? What did I do? And it's just, if they deserve a conversation, mm -hmm. give them the con If you feel like they don't deserve the conversation, that's also on you, because sometimes you just don't need people in your life. Mm -hmm. um, and so I remember there was one person who was like, you know, what happened? What did I do to you? Like, you just went quiet. And, and I know I was dealing with so much in my life. And that's the thing with me. And I'm dealing with personal issues, even though I'm working on it, I do tend to withdraw, isolate, shut down, yeah. meditate, and then come out. But I said to myself, I don't know that she deserved that. So I took her for coffee and I'm like, cause she was really hurt. She was genuinely like, I was really, really hurt. I thought we were forming a friendship. And so I just told her, look, sometimes when I'm dealing with stuff, I just tend to isolate myself. And I know some people take it personally, but sometimes it's just me dealing with me. Um, but then I realized there was a lot of people I'd hurt by doing that. And so I was like, maybe there's something to think about when it comes to how you either put yourself out there. Are you letting everybody in too close? Is that something that you need to work on? Or are you shutting people out too quickly? Is that something you need to work on? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Roy is like, I'm not convinced. <laughs> That's OK. <laughs> Sometimes yeah, somebody's talking. Yeah, because yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking, I mean, it is maybe just you just trying to protect yourself like, yeah. from negativity or yeah. whatever it is. So it, yeah, are I mean, you then, <laughs> you know, is it also a toxic trait to be like, OK, maybe <laughs> you're not that bad. Maybe, <laughs> you know, it was me. Yeah. But actually, no, maybe it wasn't just you. That's true. Maybe the thing is when there's just a pattern where no matter who comes your way, mm -hmm. no matter what the situation is, you deal with it in a certain way. Yeah. Whereas I think there's a space to say, you know what, I need to talk this out with this person mm -hmm. as opposed to, oh, I am done. Never again. I don't know. Does it depend on the person then? I think it depends on the person and the relationship you have with them. Like sometimes it's not that deep. You don't ever have to see them again. Mm -hmm. You don't ever have to be, you don't have to be chummy with everyone. Yeah. But sometimes there's people who are genuinely trying to be there for you. Yeah. And you are going back to that trait of walls up, yeah. mm -hmm. padlocked, umbwakali, yeah. <laughs> don't come near me. And yet they're like, wait, but um, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, but that's my point. Is that, isn't that you protecting yourself? Is that your point? You, you're yeah. actually kind of just saying, listen, I, I'm just trying to protect myself. Which is okay, yeah. but do you have to do that with every single person? Every person's a dick. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yes. I think, I think if it comes to doing it with friends, family, because I don't know that I had um, a system of separating. Mm -hmm. And I think that's something that I realized I needed to look into. Mm -hmm. Sometimes, yes. In fact, I do have trust issues. Like that one, uh, I know we're many. Mm -hmm. But and yes, I do tend to say, my God's going to be up. I'm going to be more cautious. But I think there was a time that it was people who actually didn't mean to harm me. Maybe it was even miscommunication. Mm -hmm. And they're like, isn't it easier for you to just tell me that my tone was off instead of going to the extreme of not that's inviting that's me back into your life? Mm -hmm. And so that's when I realized there's, yeah, sometimes it's about, it's like you're saying, it's the person, the relationship, and the situation. Mm -hmm. And like I said, sometimes it's really not that deep. Yeah. You don't have to be chummy. Mm -hmm. You don't even have to, there doesn't have to be anything. You don't have to see each other again. Mm -hmm. And maybe that's because it was a toxic friendship on both ends. But sometimes there's a place where, you know, somebody's just like, but wait, I, we had a conversation. Mm -hmm. Maybe you could have just called me out mm -hmm. and we could just move so past it. Up. Yeah. <laughs> right, right. So not, yeah. But yeah. Okay, then also, how do you have that like introspection yeah. without like now getting to the point of kind of like self-loathing and also kind of like yeah yeah, yeah well, how do you like yeah. find the thing that you think is a top, without yeah. really kind of like blaming yourself mm. or like getting? I, so, think, I feel like now I listen to you. I'm like I think you kind of <laughs> yourself. Like, yeah. Okay, yeah. It was just me, but like no, maybe it was just maybe it was just a situation. A situation that was like hey, no, yeah, that was not right. no, I think for me it's because I just noticed that it was 
a habit, but I know that the source was some form of trauma and trust issues I was dealing with. And I felt like I was projecting on anyone and everyone. Like, especially if you were trying to get too close. And sometimes when people are trying to get too close, depending on how you are, yeah. um, sometimes they're not coming with ill intentions. You vibe, you get along, you're working on a project together, you're genuinely just getting along. Mm. And this person isn't trying to force themselves into your life. They're just like, oh, wow, I mean, I feel like we're developing some kind of friendship here. And then it's just like, ghost. <laughs> <laughs> and I just, the only reason I sat and thought about it was because I noticed a pattern mm -hmm. of sometimes it wasn't necessary. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes it was, so I do not feel anything about those where it was necessary. Yeah. But in the times where it wasn't very necessary, I just questioned my approach mm -hmm. about how do you then deal with somebody who you're building something yeah. together. Mm -hmm. So there's, there's no need to treat everybody as a villain. Mm -hmm. Maybe you just w got to a place where you felt like you needed some time alone, communicate it. Just be like, listen, I just need a minute, yeah. kind of dealing with something, I'll call you next week, mm -hmm. as opposed to ghost. How do you even start being critical of yourself? That's, that's I think, the, the difficult thing that yeah. humans can't do. Is yeah. Just stop and be like... Yeah, oh, and yet, I think, I think every human being owes it to themselves to do that. Especially if it's actually asking how, like, yeah, yeah, like, like what are the steps? <laughs> you're like, you're not listening. <laughs> <laughs> Just tell me how to do it. Okay, let me tell you how I did it and yeah. how I do it. And by the way, when I look at my toxic traits, I'm not going into you're a horrible person. No. I you have to do it in a healthy way. So how did I do it? Yeah, first of all, I took some of the pain because again when you ghost and then you try to reconnect and they're like Apana, mm -hmm. see you decided yeah, yeah, yeah. see, see you yeah, decided yeah. we're not uh, and so it's about saying hmm i kind of wish i had handled that better because i think that's somebody that meant well mm -hmm. again not everyone there's some people where i'm like who dodged a bullet but then there's some people that's like yeah so i began to figure out what is that thing in me that when i wake up there's a heaviness why is it there or when, I, when, I, when a certain situation comes my way, when somebody's coming so close, I flee. Why is that there? So I had to sit down and nitpick. I literally sat down. That's what people, that's what you do when you get your moment of solitary space or whatever. And you have to be in a good space because if you're in a bad space, you could really spiral. Um, so what I did is I just told myself, you need to have a meeting with yourself and find out what these triggers are. And I literally set aside a meeting time with myself. Like the way you set up a meeting with Roy and Mutuma. Like yeah. I was like, you're gonna do this. Especially because there's kids in the picture. It's like, I told myself, you're gonna put the kids to bed. And on Thursday night, like I set up a meeting and you're gonna sit up with a glass of wine and a notebook and you're going to have a meeting with yourself, but you're gonna be gentle with yourself. And that's what I did. I set up a meeting and I was like, so this trait, these triggers, where are they from? Oh, and then some, I was having these flashbacks of things that happened when I was a child and things that happened in my relationships. I'm like, there are those triggers. Mm -hmm. Then I'm like, okay, so how do they make you feel? Like they make me feel vulnerable. They make me feel like I can't trust anyone. They make me feel like I have imposter syndrome. Okay, why do they make you feel that way? Because when this happens and I react in this way or if somebody's getting too close, I feel like they want something from me. I don't think it's genuine. I feel like they want to use me. So that's why I shut them out. Okay, is it necessary? I'm like, yeah, sometimes it is because they do want something from me or they don't have the best intentions. Then it's like, but is it always necessary? Maybe not. Okay, so where is it necessary and where is it? Like literally, I had a meeting with myself for two, three hours. And then I was like, what am I going to do now that I know this? Do I need to go for therapy? Do I need to confide in my partner? Do I need to have a meeting with my family. And then I chose, I think I chose all of the above. <laughs> I was like, huh. So was it discovering that these things, like when you list all these things down, right? yeah. it's like um, you trace all these things back, is it yeah. like unresolved yeah. issues yeah. basically? A lot of it is unresolved issues. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it's not even something that could have happened a long time ago. It could have been one thing that happened that really shook you and really traumatized you, whether it was an interaction with somebody and what they said and what you said back, or a traumatic event, whether it was something that was done to you. And yeah, so I, I, not, I noticed the triggers, because there's always triggers, and you'll always feel your 
body start to shift because they're like, and I'm like, oh, something's triggered me. Mm -hmm. Something they've said or done or something, the way they've approached me or the way I've been interacting with them over a year. And I'm, every time I'm in their space, there's a trigger. And so I even asked myself, okay, so who do you choose to, con to, to confront and who do you choose to just release? Um, and only, only you know that because you, only you know that circle. Mm -hmm. Like there's some people who it's like, I imagine it's, it's okay. Mm -hmm. We can move in different ways because we're in different wavelengths, yeah. goodbye. Mm -hmm. And there's other people where it's like, I think I owe it to confront them. And whatever comes out of that, if they want to tell you bye, then it's bye, it's fine. At least you confronted them. And there's others where you're confronting it because you want to resolve and salvage. So mm -hmm. lists, like I listed, short of having an Excel sheet, I put, I was like, who's my inner circle? And you have to keep your circle tight. I, I, when I see people with like 20 bridesmaids, I was like, are you sure? <laughs> are you very really sure? No. Your circle, as you get older, should get smaller. It really should. It should get like really tight. That's what I believe. And then within that tight circle, how do you, just how do you maintain it? Um, I was having a conversation the other day with a friend, two friends who were like celebrating Friends Day. And I asked them, how long have you been friends? And they say 20 years. I'm like, what? Mm. That's a long time. They're like, yeah, I mean, and I don't take it for granted because a lot of friends fall along the wayside. One of my best friends and I fell out, but that was something worth fighting for, mm. like to resolve it. It wasn't even that long ago. Like it was just a crazy time and it was a bad fallout and everybody came with where they went wrong. But that's one of the few times that I was like, this is worth saving because mm. they've been such a good friend. We've been there for each other. And so we sat down and it's like, what happened? What, you know, what did you do? What did I do? And then you just realize this is something that can be resolved. It didn't cut so deep. Because sometimes you can have a friend for 20 years and that's it. Mm -hmm. Like they did something that's unforgivable. And that's life. Like again, I think sometimes people overthink it. This whole toxic traits thing is not to make you be stressed and overthink life because life is so short. Mm -hmm. Just figure out how you want to move forward in different circles. And so for me, I would rather that um, with her, because I really struggled with, should I forgive her? Um, she was mostly in the wrong, wasn't she? <laughs> <laughs> Even that came with us. <laughs> These guys are like, after everything you said. <laughs> um, but then I was also in the wrong with the way I reacted. And I was like, should I, should I? And I like to seek mm -hmm. counsel. I like to speak to like older, wiser people. Mm -hmm. And I just realized this is worth fighting for. And this is worth saving. This is yeah. worth resolving. Yeah. And I'm glad we did. It's, it's steps. I know we were like, it may be awkward sometimes mm -hmm. now that there was this big crack. Mm -hmm. But I was telling her, I think I'm committed to being your friend because mm -hmm. I just think you're, you're a good person. And like we've known each other since high school and we've been there for each other's milestones. Mm -hmm. So let's not let this thing destroy what we have. There's others where I'm like, goodbye. Mm -hmm. And even them. I like the people are like, you know, there's certain people you have to pray out of your life. I'm like, someone is also praying you yeah. out of their life <laughs> because of those toxic traits. So anyway, it goes back to meeting with yourself. People don't like to do that, but you just be gentle with it and just say, these are the things. When people say this or do this, I'm triggered. Why am I triggered? And how can I manage it? It doesn't mean it goes away. I think with toxic traits, unless they're really bad, if it's deep, you know, a substance abuse, mental health, then yeah, then you need, a, you need to do something. You need to seek counseling and therapy. Sometimes you need to manage them. They'll always, maybe they'll always be there. It's just about not projecting them in such a horrible way. Yeah. And just say, when somebody points this out, instead of being mean or rude about it, I could be defensive and make a comment and just take it and say, I, I don't know that I need to make this dramatic. I don't know if I'm making sense. Like sometimes you just need to manage your toxic traits yeah. and just say, I, it doesn't always have to end up that it's so toxic that, yes, I do know I'm stubborn. Fine, I, like I know, Jan, I'm very stubborn. Oh, I'm a very stubborn human being. And it's like, how do I be stubborn but not make it a living hell for the people around me? Yeah. That they're like, you can't tell her anything. Mm -hmm. She will do what she wants. These are things I hear all the time. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Jan, you just do what you want. Um, and then be like, okay, I recognize that that keeps coming up. Mm. So how do I do it in a way that guys are like, you know, I, I just want nothing to do with it. Because this is your inner circle, this is your family and your partner or whatever. So it's about recognizing when you can compromise. Mm. Again, this is speaking to me, it's for me. So if I make a decision, I'm like, we're doing this. And somebody's like, there you go doing. So instead of saying, yeah, but I think it's the right thing. It's like, okay, look, I think it's the good thing. What, what would you rather we do? Yeah. 
and then just meeting and still sometimes being like, I've heard you, but I still want to do it my way. <laughs> so compromise, just finding little ways to be like, how do I just make sure it's just it's not it's not self-sabotaging me and sabotaging others. And I think that's why I wanted to talk about this because you go into a space and hear that this person is coming after what you have or what or speaking really badly about mm. you or speaking really badly about everyone. And I'm like, you're self-sabotaging. Mm. What are you doing? Like, please go and fix yourself or just have a meeting with yourself. So if you're self-sabotaging or going out of your way to sabotage others all the time, mm. yeah, that's, that's why you need to recognize you have a toxic something that you need to figure out what are the triggers? Mm. What can you do? I don't know. But you can't. Yeah. Like the, the risk is like looking inside and then yeah. realizing I'm a crappy person. No! <laughs> and that's the thing. It's the difference between I have crappy traits and I'm a crappy person. Yeah. Don't victimize yourself. Mm. Be, be cognizant of the fact that these are traits mm. that you exhibit. It's not who you are. And they can be changed. Exactly. They can be changed. Like, I think that's the difference. Like, you have to be, you have to, people have to be kind to themselves. Yes, I know there are douchebags that exist. Yeah. I don't know that I can speak and say, you be kind to yourself. You just, I don't know. I don't want to say that I'm kumbaya about that. Um, but where you feel like you are doing you, doing the best you can, going through your seasons of, like I was just telling Wakesho, like, you know, August, I just don't feel like seeing guys. I, I don't want to interact with human beings unless they're my small humans. <laughs> but yet I must. <laughs> but it's because some, but I'm here because I've worked on a way to still be able to interact and function even when I don't necessarily want to because I'm equipping myself with the coping tools of mm -hmm. saying, okay, I know in August you'd rather do nothing but be on holiday. Mm -hmm. Pray, meditate, quiet time on a beach somewhere because of a number of reasons. It's been a tough year. It's just, there's just been so much going on and I'm like, I just want to decompress. But also knowing that you don't necessarily have the option. Sometimes it's as simple as taking a walk around the block, breathing exercises, um, you know, just listening to something, listening to a certain podcast. But I just feel like sometimes people are just very comfortable in their discomfort, and that's not good. Because I think it manifests in, you know, increased anxiety. Depre There's a lot of anxiety going around, by the way. Like, a lot of people would just rather not deal with people yeah. or deal with the online space. Um, and I'm like, but you kind of have to, if it's especially your line of work, yeah. So how do you cope? I sometimes take breaks off social, I love it. And that's my way of just decompressing. Um, like I'm traveling this month with my family and I know that week no one can reach me. I'll make sure I've put everything in place and I'm like, you won't reach me. My phone will probably be on flight mode. And then I'll come back after a week. But some people can't, don't have the luxury to do that. So what are the little ways that you can create coping mechanisms and tools? Because everybody needs coping tools, I think, everyone with anxiety, with depression, with um, feeling horrible about who you are as a human being, because a lot of people really deride themselves. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, but you know, don't, you just, just cope with that little, that thing there that triggers. So like when you, you, you were talking about like looking back and kind of tracing all these things yeah. that can lead to this toxicity. Yeah. Is there something like, okay, I'm here with my friend and we, something's not right. Mm -hmm. Is there something I can do at that moment? Mm -hmm. Like I look into myself before it escalates to this point where mm -hmm. there's no turning just, back. There's no turning back. Yeah. What can I do at that point? Do you think like that it's like okay, yeah. stop or yeah, this? I think you can start the conversation there and then. There and then, and even when things are just like in the thick of things. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Because <laughs> like, even like mm. relationships, that's the hardest. Relationships, part. colleagues. Yeah. You know, really, yeah, uh, relationships that are really kind of deep and personal, like right. How hard. they're hard, but you can't avoid the uncomfortable, guys. You can't. You either. But you can't. Sometimes you can't even. You can't yeah. help your toxicity at that moment. You know what I mean? Walk away, breathe, and write to them. Yeah. 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 I was, <laughs> I was speaking with someone the other day who says, when I'm really upset with someone, I write a letter. And sometimes I'll show it to them and sometimes I won't. But I get the thoughts out on paper. And I just feel like it's a release for me. And then I ask them, but don't you ever confront the person? I'm like, I think, because even for me, I sometimes need a minute before I say something. Because, ooh, 
loose lip sync ships, my favorite saying ever. You could just ruin everything. Yeah. So sometimes I just walk away, or I just say I need a minute, or I say I'll talk to you later, or I'll call you tomorrow, mm -hmm. or I'll call you next week. That's how I deal with it now, because before I'd be like, let me tell you something. Yeah. <laughs> and the first one is like, ouch. Like, where, 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 where? <laughs> so I'm, you know, there's this thing that the Swahili people say, they're like, kunyu amaji, just mm. drink, just, just pretend you're, mm. yeah. and then just be like, I'ma come back. Because if you, feel, if you realize that your trait is to explode, push back, talk back, and I'm not saying there's no place for those things. Sometimes it's like, listen, you can't talk to me like that. But if you feel like it's all the time, you're just unhinged mm -hmm. and clenched <laughs> all the time, then maybe it's just to kind of find, how can I manage this? Do I just need to step back before I call this person? Do I need to just leave the room, literally walk up and leave yeah. the room and then come back the next day and say, look, we either need to resolve this or we just let it go. You know, because people, some people hate confrontation, but I'm like, you don't have to confront with aggression, man. Just, just recognize that you need. <laughs> well, Lord, let us <laughs> <laughs> like, whom? Oh, where do I start? Then it becomes a scroll. But yeah, it's like you're not a bad person. I think I don't like people making you feel like you're a bad person. I don't like that because I'm like, you know what? I already have moments when I feel like a pretty crappy person. Mm -hmm. I don't need you to push that narrative yeah. down my throat. Yeah. No. Let me figure that out with myself, or better yet, with people who genuinely care about me. Because people are be like, oh, Jenny, she's so stubborn. Eh. She just thinks she's all that. I'm like, no, <laughs> shut up. <laughs> you know what, like, Jerry Springer used to say, be kind to yourself and each other? Yeah. Makes sense. It really does. Yeah. You re and if you're not kind with yourself, can't be kind with others. Because no, you you'll just be on edge. Yeah. Yeah. You, what do you want? Yeah. You, why are you looking at me? <laughs> why did you look at me like that? It's like, yeah. I didn't look at you in yeah. any way. Yeah. But people want you to feel worse about how you are already feeling about yourself. And I say, take that crap and throw it out because I'm sorry, we already wake up not sometimes just feeling like we're not good people. Um, let me resolve that with myself or with my tight circle. You, who just assumes you know me, I don't need your opinion. I'm sorry. And I don't need you to make me feel crappier than I already feel. I already know that I'm... Like we already know those things where we're like, that wasn't yeah. cool, man. Like, you, you didn't, like, come on, man. You didn't need yeah. to talk to her like that. So who are you to come and reinforce it? No, go. Let me figure it out. But the bottom line is you either choose to, to work on something or you don't, literally. It comes down to choice and you have a choice. Like you, you know, um, when people, it goes back to the interview I had with my brother mm -hmm. and he noticed his very toxic traits. And he was just like, I just have to make a choice that I want to fix it or I'm going to spiral. Mm -hmm. It comes down to that moment when you're like, this shift in me, I either need to be intentional. And it's very hard because if, you, it's, if it's, for example, substance abuse, yeah. which was partly in his case, yeah. it's the easiest thing to fall back on. Mm -hmm. But then he's like, but every, every time I do that, I hurt everyone around me. Mm -hmm. So there needs to come to a point where you're like, I can't keep doing this. Mm -hmm. You know, maybe I, and it's the hardest thing to do but it's literally the, the best thing that you can do for yourself. You either sit and be toxic for the rest of your life, yeah. or you decide, I kind of want something different. And so, and a lot of it for me is also to be a better mom. Mm -hmm. I noticed that I was projecting certain things and certain frustrations, and maybe my toddler was picking up on, like, why are you angry? And I'm like, oh, I'm projecting. Oh, crap. Okay. And I think part of it was that. That's what made me say, I, I don't want to be this person who's always spewing certain, a certain narrative and it's going to affect how they think about life. I need to figure out how to have a healthier way of talking about issues without feeding them those insecurities, anxiety. Like I said, I have anxiety. Sometimes I recognize a little bit of it in my older son. And I'm like, oh no, 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 come back here. So I try to tell him, no, 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 don't be scared about it. Let's just try. Then I realize, yeah, that was you. That was you projecting. <laughs> then he saw, then he decided. Then I tell the baby, don't be like that. 10 months old, just it's like, eh, hey, I'm like, just don't do it. So yeah, I think it's like, you do pass it on. Yeah. And so I was like, I can't, and I have a very long way to go, by the way, you guys, please don't see me here as a T, this is my Oprah moment. <laughs> I have a long, but like, I'm working on it. Yeah. The difference is this time, I'm actually like, I'm working on it. Has it, how has it, like, have you, what kind of changes have you seen in yourself? I think just the fact like, that- How long have you been it, doing it first? Like, how long have I been working on it? Yeah. 
I would say since um, since November. So it's almost, it's going to be a year soon, almost a year, um, since November. What change have I seen? A, just the fact that I can admit that I have traits that need, like you're saying, it's the hardest thing to do. The second thing is I think I'm able to cope better now in social settings. I know it's very weird for somebody in TV to say that, but it's just sometimes I would just rather not be because of anxiety. But now I'm like, yes, I still struggle with it, but I think now I can find ways to be present and not feed myself a lot of this stuff. Apparently, I'm also an empath. That's what I was told. So I don't thrive when there's a lot of negative energy. And I pick up on energy, literally. And so there's certain people and places I'll avoid. Because I'm like, that's not healthy for me. Mm -hmm. But if I have to be there, then I have to cope. Mm -hmm. And everybody just needs coping tools. And coping tools could be as easy as taking a walk. Um, somebody actually said taking a walk and feeling that gravel under your feet. Mm -hmm can help with the anxiety and bring it down. Taking omega-3 tablets can help with anxiety. It's not a drug. It's actually a, what do you call it? Um, what's the word? It's actually a supplement. It's actually a healthy supplement. And for some reason, I don't even think science has figured it out. It brings down your levels of anxiety. It actually helped me. Helps me. And it's a vitamin. So I'm like, yes, I am winning on all fronts. <laughs> and people are like, for some reason, it's not explained. But there's something in it that brings down your levels of anxiety. And that's going to the count and picking up omega-3. It's taking a walk. It's maybe, again, plugging into the things that you love. Is it drawing? Is it music? Is it spending time with your kid or your friend? Something. But some things are within reach. Sometimes you just need to be in your own space, but be doing something healthy in that space. So like I said, either I'm journaling now. I've gone back to journaling, which is really helping me. Or I take a walk, a long walk. I take like a 20, 30 minute walk. And when I come back, I actually feel better because I'm alone with my thoughts in a quiet, place where I can walk quietly, is it arboretum, is it I don't know where, sit down, have a nice snack, listen to something, read a nice book, and go home and be like, okay, right, feel better now. But yeah, because the other option is you just sit there in that toxicity. So protect yourself at all costs. <laughs> That's my sign, protect yourself, because there's people who want to infringe and just make you miserable to so protect yourself. Honestly, protect yourself. <laughs> I like the Roy ends it with this life is hard. <laughs>